here's the problem. You think you're playing this. <laughs> you're actually playing this. If you don't get your bass muting technique together, the notes you mean to play will get smothered by the rumbling racket of your other ringing strings. The difference might sound subtle through a little practice amp, or if you're listening to this through your phone speaker. Sounds fine. But it won't be subtle when it's thundering through a loud amp or a venue's PA system. So here are five bass muting fixes from super beginner to more advanced that'll help you axe the unwanted rumbling and string ringing and tighten up your playing. And you'll learn to apply these during the video as we play along with a little Bon Jovi. Let's rock! Muting means keeping strings from ringing that you don't want ringing so that your bass lines sound clean and clear and not like a muddy inaudible mess. This is a huge deal for us bass players because we're usually just playing one note at a time, which means there's one string we want ringing and three that we don't. And even if you're not doing anything wrong by like knocking into the strings that you're not playing, they can vibrate anyway due to sympathetic vibration. Sympathetic vibration is when the vibration from one string causes another nearby string to also vibrate, even if you didn't touch it. Check this out. Fret the second fret on the D string, which is an E, uh, don't touch your low E string, whatever you do during this whole demo. Okay, now pluck that note, and now mute your A, D, and G strings with both hands, still don't touch your low E, and check out what happens. Your low E is ringing, and you can hear it and see it moving, right? That's sympathetic vibration in action, and that's why you need to be a muting ninja. Good bass muting technique takes both hands. Your plucking hand mostly covers the lower strings, and your fretting hand is most helpful for covering the higher strings. These five fixes are gonna cover both, but we'll start with the plucking hand. The first and easiest muting fix is the thumb mute. The thumb mute. This is the easiest way to mute your low strings. You can move your thumb between the pickup, the E string, and the A string, depending on what strings you're playing. <laughs> But if your thumb goes to the A string, make sure you angle it so it also covers the E string. But you never need to move the thumb all the way down to the D string because of fix number two, the pull across. The pull across! Students often think they need to have their thumb on the next string over from where they're plucking like this. But you can actually be two strings away because of the pull across. We've talked about this many times before, Pull across. Pull across. Pull across. The pull across. And if you want more videos of me telling you to pull across, then hit subscribe and click the bell so you get notified about new pulling across videos. Pulling across, also called a rest stroke, means that when you pluck, your finger should pull across the horizontal plane of the bass, coming to rest on the next string over, which mutes it. If you pluck up and away from the bass like this, you'll be missing out on this awesome muting tool, plus your tone won't be as fat and bassy. Those two muting tools will get you pretty far, and that's about as much muting as I would teach to an absolute beginner. But if you still have gaps in your low string muting, you might need fix number three, the sneaky finger. Smart. Since we don't use our ring or pinky for standard bass plucking, you can sneak them in as muting tools so your thumb mute doesn't have to do all the work. Like if you don't like moving your thumb all the way to the A string when you're playing on the high strings, you can leave your thumb further back on the E string and cover that A string up with a ring or a pinky. Let's put these three tips in action with the main riff from You Give Love a Bad Name by Bon Jovi. Real quick, let me just walk you through the fretting fingering on this. We're gonna play pinky on the third fret of the A string, to ring on the third fret of the E string, to index on the first fret of the A string, back to pinky on the third fret, back to index on the first fret of the D, pluck that twice, then back to pinky on the third fret, index on the first fret, and then same thing in the second bar. Pinky, ring, index, pinky, index, index, pinky. The most important muting tool for this line will be the pull across, because all of your A string plucks will mute the E string, and your D string plucks will mute the A string. So the only low string left to cover is the E string here when we're playing on the D string. So you can use the thumb mute, like this, or you could leave your thumb back on the pickup 
and use a sneaky finger, like I'll get my ring finger in here, and cover up that E string. And if any of this already feels overwhelming, I cover plucking hand muting in mega detail in my Beginner to Badass course over at BassBuzz.com. But let me demonstrate how this bass line sounds using only these three muting tools. Here we go. Do that one more time. So it sounds like okay, right? The low strings are covered. But the D and G strings are ringing. And that's why we need to incorporate the fretting hand to get those high strings muted as well. Getting the plucking hand muting together is something most beginners can handle with some practice, but nailing the fretting hand muting will take a lot more time well into your intermediate stage of development. So don't expect to nail these next two fixes on day one. Get the plucking hand tight first, and then start working on the fretting hand muting. That said, let's go to fix number four, the string sitter. The string sitter. Strings are like babies. You can't just leave them home alone. Ah! They need a sitter but beginners often just let their fingers fly off the string when they're done with a note, which leads to ringing string problems. So if you leave them on the string when you're done, they become a valuable muting tool. So I'm playing this C on the third fret of the A string. When it's time for that note to end, I release the pressure of fretting, but I wanna stay in contact with the string, and that keeps it silent. If I just fly off, then I get a ringing open A string. It takes a lot of work to train this reflex to sit on the string, but if you go super slow and practice a lot, eventually it becomes second nature. And if you're already doing this, you can take your string sitting to the next level by making sure you have multiple fingers touching the string so that you don't get any ringing overtones like this. That brings us to our final fix, number five, the subject of some controversy, the flat hand. Attention! Flat hand formation, sir! This is the best tool for muting the high strings that you aren't playing. Beginners often start playing bass with their fingers really curved, kind of like you would on piano. And that is a legit way to play bass. Pro bassists do it sometimes, and it gives you very slightly cleaner notes and articulations. But for most bass playing, it's actually better to have a flatter hand. With your hand flattened out, you'll be fretting on the, more on the pads of your fingers which leaves the rest of the length of your fingers resting on the other strings to keep them muted, especially those higher strings. And your index finger is the best place to start with the flat hand tool because it can rest on the strings behind the other fingers when they're fretting notes. Now let's apply all that to this Bon Jovi line. Remember, if you're a beginner, fretting hand muting might be pretty hard, so focus on fixes one through three for the plucking hand first, and then eventually you'll be able to think about the fretting hand muting more. So if you're ready, let's tackle this. You can use the string sitter after your first note. You'll just leave the pinky touching the A string when you go to the ring finger on the E. So I'm still resting here with the pinky. And you can also use it when we get to those D string first fret notes. So in between the two plucks on that note, there should be a little space, ba -ba, which is what that staccato mark means in the sheet music, that little dot. So you can string sit in between those notes to get the short note, pluck, lift, to get some space and then plug again. And then you can string sit again when you go back to the A string. So you just leave the index sitting on the first fret when you go to the pinky on the third fret of the A string. As for the flat hand, you can use it all the way through this bass line. The index finger can cover the D and G strings while you're on those E and A string notes, which is most of this bass line. And when you pop up to the D string, if your index finger is flat enough, you'll cover the G string with the meat of your finger further back there. Okay, before we actually play this bass line together, here's the big muting test so you know if you're doing this right. In slow motion, play this bass line, but you wanna pluck all four strings on every note, like this. So you should only hear the one note that you're aiming for, and the other three strings should just make a muffled thump sound. If you hear any open strings like this, then there are gaps in your muting. And yes, these big weird plucks are gonna totally mess up your muting technique. It's gonna mess up your pulling across, and it's gonna be hard to anchor your thumb, do the sneaky finger, but this is the best way to check your muting and increase your awareness of what all your strings are doing. Okay, great work. This is a lot to digest and it's gonna take even more practice to get these techniques second nature. So let's finish on a fun note and just play some Bon Jovi. Notice that when we repeat the riff, we're gonna hold over onto the next beat one and tie that note. 
Okay, here we go. Four clicks and we're in. One, two, three, four. Strings are ringing, and you're to blame. You give faith a bad name. Play your face with no muting game. You give faith a bad name. You give faith.